sa other provinces, it's only starting to accelerate now. So it's, not, it's far from peaking in many provinces. And the country's current COVID-19 alert level system will remain unchanged for now as the government comes up with a new classification scheme. Each area you can have a green, yellow, and red, no? And uh, whether it's, uh, you can go down to the region, the provinces, no? uh, and even the barangay level, it, it'll be more transparent. President Bongbong Marcos says that there is no need for a law requiring Filipinos to get their COVID-19 vaccines in booster shots. Sa tulong ng DOH, ng DILG, ng DepEd, isusulong ang malawakang kampanya muli para sa pagbabakuna sa booster shot. Preparasyon na rin ito sa pagbabalik ng face-to-face -face classes at pagluwag ng iba pang mga safety protocols. Kung magiging matagumpay ang kampanyang ito, tuloy na tuloy na yan. On the President's orders, the Health Department begins streamlining processes in its COVID response. Ahead are tweaks in the composition of the Interagency Task Force and the Alert Level System. The DOH is also ramping up its vaccination campaign amid concern from the private sector that more than 1.5 million of its vaccines are about to expire. We sit down with the Acting DOH Secretary in this episode of The Chiefs. Welcome to the Chiefs. Ako po si Robby Alampay. Kasama po natin online, Ami Pamintuan of the Philippine Star, Luchi Cruz Valdez of News 5, and here in the studio with us in Mandaluyong, Ed Lingao of One News Chiefs. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Happy midweek. Mm. Ami, anong balita bukas? Mukhang magkakaroon ng blended learning even after November 2, no? Mm. Pinag-aaralan daw na i-institutionalize na yata yun. Mm. Pero in specific areas lang daw, di ba? Yes, yung, yung, oh, yung mga talaga hindi kaya, mahina yung internet, mataas yung COVID. So, pero at least nandun yung option, no? Hindi mm. siya yeah. talagang 100%. Medyo, medyo nagpipivot na. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bok, yeah. anong minomonitor natin? Well, uh, may taga-depe na nagsabi that you're considering using both English and Filipino for uh, kindergarten. As mm. young as kindergarten, ha? Uh, yeah, kindergarten media of instruction. Although I think it's only a proposal so far. Matagal yeah. na ang wala sa kindergarten. Ano bang policy? Ano, ano bang nananay? Alam ka naman, Robby. <laughs> ano? So totoo lang. Mother tongue. Mother tongue policy. Eh. Mother tongue policy. Ah, yes. okay. Although so, iba-iba, yung iba, 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 iba grade 3 hmm. ng tradusyong English, yung iba grade 1 lang daw meron na. Public hmm. school, ha? Public school. Iba-iba hmm. din siya. Mm. So yun, ito si ano, si uh, si ah, si Den Singh, si Pimako Den Singh, dating in here secretary, under secretary. Mm. <laughs> Ngayon nasa education siya. Mm. <laughs> okay. Oh, siya nagsabi. Oh. Mm. Well, anyway, all of this of course goes into the state of the nation. Ah, is basta segue yan, Ami. Anyway, all of this oh, inputs to the state of the nation. We're all preparing for the state of the nation address of uh, President uh, Bongbong Marcos. In fact, we are only five days away until President Marcos' first sona. Let's get the latest on preparations from the House Secretary General, Mark Mendoza. Welcome to the Chiefs, Mr. Mendoza. Yes, good evening, uh, Sir Ed. Good evening, Sir. Good evening, Sir. Good evening, Sir. Mm, sir, maybe let, let's, let's go ahead and jump into a situation. Or also, I mean, to add context, I mean, we understand newly renovated ang, 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 uh, ang House of Representatives, uh, kung saan magaganap ang SONA. I mean, what are the what are the new um, complications or improvements arising from those uh, renovations? And all in all, kamusta po ang preparations natin? Yes, sir. Good evening po. No? Well, uh, so far, sir, so, pinago, sir, natin yung setup, sir, sa session hall. As, uh, kung matatandaan po ninyo before, medyo masikip na po yung ano, no? The design was, uh, I think, for 100, 100 to 150 uh, members only when it was constructed. Uh, Thirty years ago, uh, right now, sir, uh, we have around 315 uh, members of the 19th Congress. So, medyo masikip na po talaga. At uh, so, nagawa, uh, inayos po namin, uh, ginawa po na para na mapalaki ito, mapaluwag. So, accommodate uh, 315. First gallery po natin, oh. 50 members po. Pagkana. 
Nagawa namin ng paraan na. Nabawasan lang po talaga yung galas ng school na. So, tapos so, sabagit so, yung elevated. So, paano pang nila yung mga wives, spouses nila? Ano? Sa ano ma'am? Sa galas na po sila. Upo. Ah, doon na. Yes. Cash up pa rin yun? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yun, 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 Para yun, 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 Nabawasan lang po talaga yung mga normal. Before po, naalaw po mga... Mga hanggang four, four, uh, four guests po per member. Ngayon po, one na lang po. Oh, one na lang ang... One na lang po. Yung spouse na lang po. One na lang po, inibita na. Okay, narinig niyo. One spouse lang, ha? One, one spouse lang ang pwedeng dali. Doon ang proclamation ni Robin. Ba't ang tatawa ng kawit-tawa nito? Pero paano yung seating nun? Kasha ba yun? Kasi mga 1,300 guests. Yes, yes ma'am. Ano, kasha ba yun? Distancing ba yun? Distancing? Ah, ano ma'am, nag-full capacity po kami. Uh, yung sa penalty sa mantok, may distansya po ng kaunti. Pero yun pong sa... Seating? Sa, sa, sa ano, seating po niya, medyo... Uh, hindi naman ho dikit na dikit. May space pa nung pangat pa paano. The same time po, mag- <laughs> Yeah, may ano po, may RTPCR po kami na ano, mandatory ah, po, mandatory pala. po, lahat po nang nag yeah. a uh, mas under po, ano po, uh, yes. RTPCR test po. Uh, pero ako po, I'm, I'm also eager to see that. No? Yung, yung sinabi nyo nga po ngayon, elevated na. Kasi dati, if people are not familiar mm, flat, with it, flat, flat lang, lang yun eh, di ba? Mm. Parang ano, okay. uh, how, how does that look? Ano yung, ano yung setup ngayon? And, and uh, again, how and why did you manage to do that? Ano po sir, uh, pinasan ho namin ako. At maganda sir ngayon yung setup kasi kahit nasa likod, dati po kasi pagka nung pantay po siya, nasa likod po na member, hindi na rin po kita ng ano, hmm. yung majority leader, hindi na po masyadong kita rin po ng uh, presiding officer sa taas. Ah. So dito po, at any angle po, kita po ng lahat ng isa't isa. So mahirap na matulog sa likod. <laughs> O oh, sir, saka medyo maliwanag na po. Kita-kita na po. Na, yung Kahit mga roofer. Kahit po natin, maliwanag na po. So, kita na po sila. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sekjen, dati kasi linear yung arrangement ng, ano, eh, mga, ng mga, uh, lamesa at upuan. Eh. Uh, tanda ko yun, eh, talagang several, ano, i -i pwede nga columnar, ano, eh, uh, columnar arrangement dati eh, uh, ng, uh, yes, sir, yes, ng mga congressmen. Eh. But now that you have several levels, uh, how does that go? Uh, are you doing it uh, in such a way na Hindi na siya linear kolumnal, kolumnal bata uh, ano pa paano ba? Paano nga ba? Parang semi ano sir, naka ano, sir, circular, naka, semi circular. Parang na half moon pong style niya pataas. So parang amphitheater type po ang ginawa po na na, na design po sa plenary po. Yung pag pagre-renovate niyo, nag nagdagdag ba kayo ng or nag 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 rift nag bago ba kayo ng ventilation system kasi yun ang sinasabi ng mga tao, kailangan daw para safe from covid and other germs eh. Ayusin yung ventilation. Yes, ma'am. Naglagay po kami ng ano, nag, uh, doon po sa air conditions. Naglagay po kami ng UV. Na, mm -hmm. ano po, naglagay, nagdagdag po kami. So, uh, medyo, ano po, medyo safe na po yung, ano, yung area po. Maraming po sa kami bintana sa plenary hall namin. Mm -hmm. Ito po naging problema po namin. So, uh, naglagay po kami ng mga bago na ano po. Uh, exhaust ba yun? Exhaust? Ano ano man, UV po, nagawin po kami ng UV. Ah, UV. Ano, UV po, dun po sa, sa, may air, sa, air, yeah, sa may air conditioning system po namin, naglagay po kami. Okay, now of course, uh, of course, Sec. Jen, uh, marami rin mga nanonood ang mas may pakialam sila sa labas at uh, saka kung paano sila pwedeng makilahok o manood o, diba, o magprotesta for that matter. Ano pong dapat yes. maintindihan ng mga tao on the arrangements both in the gallery and also outside of the uh, of the hall. Yes po. Ang ang makakapas ko po sir is po may invitation po ano. Same time naman po na gusto naman po. Meron din po kami naka-live naman po to at the same time naka nasa Facebook sa Facebook page po ng house at the same time naman po mga hindi maka-attend na invited guests po namin. Meron po ng uh, Zoom platform din po na pwede pong mapanood ng mga ng mga, mga guests po na. Ano, paano ang programa nun? Uh, will you follow the traditional sequence of uh, yung parang from arrival to the welcome, tapos pupunta muna dun sa parang sitting room uh, before going out to plenary? Ganun pa rin ba? Yes, Ma'am Lucci. The same, same ano rin po. Same process pa rin po. So, mm. When the president arrives ko, he goes straight to the ano po, sa holding room, then... Uh, Talk to the Senate President and the Speaker, then they'll proceed na po sa session 1. 
and then we expect that uh, the speech will uh, will will be according to the time allotted to it, right? Because the president will be there. We will not know how long it will take. But this, uh, I'm sure they will it be very on the particular about the time. Yes. Yeah. Depends uh, on the president. It's yeah. his time, mommy. So. <laughs> It's up to him kung gano'ng uh, katagal para ma-present po niya yung uh, program of government po niya para po sa mga kapatid. Uh, uh, we don't... Hindi mo pa alam kung gano'ng kahaba yun. No idea. Wala, no idea pa po. No idea pa po. Uh, mm, yeah. May special request ba, Malacanang, for the president by way of security or special arrangements for, for the family siguro Ma'am, uh, yes ma'am, may securities mo po. Well coordinated naman po lahat. Actually, uh, we're gonna lock down na po tomorrow uh, ang uh, Congress. Uh, Restricted na po ang pagpasa po ng mga bisita po kami. Only a certain first net to be allowed. So, masasarta po yung, ano, yung uh, security teams po na mag-sanitize mm. uh, po ng area. Yeah, sir, what does this all mean uh, for traffic? Uh, both uh, around the Batasan uh, campus all the way to eh, oh, Quezon Circle, siguro. What does it all mean? Yes, sir. Uh, meron pong traffic reducing camp po na ginawa ang MMD at saka ang uh, PNP po. Ano? May lalabas po silang advisory with regards po sa traffic plan po na gagawin. Ah, wala pa po tayong detalye. <laughs> ano po? Uh, actually, yung pong, yung may zipper lane po na gagamitin going sa ano po. Sa Commonwealth po, may zipper lane po na gagamitin going to Batasan po. Uh, simula po sa circle, uh, going to Batasan po. Tapos may mga ibang alternate risk po na gagamitin hmm. kapunta po sa Batasan po. And yung mga ina-anticipate po natin mga magpoprotesta, uh, eh, it's not much of a sonang. Wala namang mga nagrarally sa labas. Hanggang saan po sila pwedeng lumapit? Well, actually, yung PNP po, ang ano, yung sikat ng in-search po din, uh, sir, I think nag-announce din po ata sila na ah. earlier kanina po na no rally zone po ang Commonwealth area. Yes. So mm, baka yes. may isang circle para pantang circle po si Bruce sila. Okay. Okay. In the park lang. Pero siyempre dapat handa rin sila na magkaroon ng, uh, well, sabi na nga, lightning rally or ba basta, eh, hindi mo ma-predict, ano? Uh, naisip ko lang, sir, kung dumoble na pala yung bilang, no? Uh, from the original uh, number that uh, it was that the Bata Sun was constructed for. Paano yung mga opisina nila? Hmm. Um, Excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, natagdagan naman. <laughs> Nagawa naman namin ng paraan, ma'am. Na-adjust naman po yung, ano, yung uh, mga offices po ng mga members po natin. Yung buong 315 members naman po, may mga kanya-kanyang rooms naman po sa mga. Na, kasi hmm. last progress, ma'am, ano po, eh, uh, Around 305 or 306 sa pong naging members. So, na-adjust din po namin. Nagawan po na para. Like, like it's done in coming at in Congress po. May available rules naman po. Na-accommodate naman po lahat. Mm. Yung, yung invitation nyo, may RSVP ba yan? Meron ba nagsabi na hindi sila makakarating? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we kailangan po mag-advise uh, po sila para ma-prepare din po namin. Kasi kailangan po mag-ready. Mag may mm. binibigay po kami na... House pass man, may ID po kami pinipigay para maka-access po sila sa nakapasok po sila. So may mga, may mga prominent names ba na hindi makakarating for some reason or another? So far ma'am, wala pa naman po kami advisory. Baka, hopefully, baka, baka by Thursday or Friday po, malalaman po natin kasi hindi po yung mm. uh, katsend or hindi po. Pero so far po, okay naman po. Uh, medyo madami na po mag Okay. okay. House Secretary General Mark Mendoza. Sir, maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And we'll start up another conversation after the break. Please stay with us. The Chiefs will be right back.
Welcome back to the Chiefs here in One News. Former presidential advisor Joey Concepcion reveals about 1.5 million COVID-19 vaccines are due to expire by the end of July. That's talk from uh, the private sector. What is the health department's plan to prevent these from going to waste? Let's ask uh, DOH officer in charge, Maria Rosario Vergere, who's joining us live now via Zoom. Ma, magandang gabi po, and uh, thank you for joining us. Welcome back to the Chiefs. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, um, ma'am. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Good evening to all of you. Good evening po. Ma'am, of course, you wanna talk, we want to ask you a lot, about a lot of things uh, from COVID vaccines down the line. But let me start off po with this. Uh, in five days, the president delivers his State of the Nation address. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, we'd like to think that uh, the president also got inputs from the DOH uh, for his address. Um, I suppose the question a lot of people's minds right now is what can they expect? Uh, from the President Sona as far as COVID-19 response and, uh, and uh, health plans and health policies uh, going forward? Uh, yes, sir. No? So, unang una, syempre, yung expand, uh, expanding our vaccination coverage. That was the very first directive that was given to us by the President. And uh, we will, uh, we have given him inputs on this so that it can be included in the Sona so that we can gain more ground uh, we can gain more confidence para po magpa-booster shots, no? yung first booster shots ng ating mga kababayan. Pangalawa would be our uh, healthcare workers. No? So isa yan din sa kanyang mga priorities na mapangalagaan natin ng healthcare workers and we should be able to facilitate the provision of the benefits for our healthcare workers. The third would be our universal health care because within this universal health care strategy or law that we have right now, na andyan na lahat ng components from health human resources, facilities, and also the commodities that we have, the drugs, lahat po yan makakatulong sa ating response for COVID. Uh, Ma'am, of course, lahat yan nakatali rin. I mean, actually health, nakatali sa lahat ng usapin. But one of the big things in people's minds right now, of course, education. By the time the President delivers his SONA, meron po bang kailangan linawin o meron po bang mas kalinawan pagdating sa issue or sa usapin ng face-to-face -face classes by November? Actually, we don't find any issues at all. Uh, we just need to work together so that we can provide a safe environment for our children. Ang unang-una nating taklaruhin, hindi po kondisyon ang pagbabakuna para makapasok sa eskwelahan ng ating mga kabataan. We will be encouraging, of course, uh, we will be setting up vaccination sites in school so that the mothers uh, can be more encouraged to have their children vaccinated. As well as kung sila rin hindi pa bakunado, they can have themselves back vaccinated. Pati na rin po yung mga guro. Uh, but one thing that has to be ensured would be, as I've said, the safety environment for our children. Mm, but, but to that point, ma'am, if, if, if you don't mind, there does seem to be a tweaking or at least a managing of the expectations of people because uh, uh, two weeks ago it seemed to be a, a clearer um, uh, directive coming from the, uh, from the president and the, and the vice president that by November, full face-to-face, -face, the face-in starts in September, full na by, by November. Now the message, uh, given the situation, seems to be that, look, we, we may have to consider hybrid uh, for, and, and maybe even institutionalize it for longer. Is there anything new uh, that, 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 that came in or that came to light uh, that, that led to that, uh, as I said, that, that seems to be, for us, a, 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 a tweaking and a management of expectations? Well, in terms of safety protocols, uh, it's still the same. Uh, whatever we have agreed on as protocols for the safe environment for our children still remains to be the same. Uh, when we have, uh, when this was discussed during the cabinet meeting, one of the things that was considered was the last mile schools. And these are the schools in poorer areas of the country wherein uh, classrooms are sparse and classrooms are very small. That's why there was this uh, consideration to have this hybrid format for education. But, but uh, are you in any way in close coordination with uh, the VP, who is also the DepEdSec, in as much as the major concern of teachers in particular uh, it's, it's the fact that there just are not enough classrooms to allow uh, for the for the social distancing that's needed uh, among students uh, because they cannot all be hemmed in into the same classroom all 
probably 60 of them, right? Um, how, is there any coordination as far as, uh, I don't know, maybe scheduling the classes or, or uh, keeping it to a number that's manageable? That's between the DOH and the DepEd. Ah, yes, ma'am. Uh, during the very first cabinet meeting, it was already discussed. And the discussions were that it would really be improbable or impossible, especially for those small, smaller areas to have this physical distancing in their classrooms. And even our experts have recommended uh, that we do not have to delay the opening and the full implementation of face-to-face -face because of this, because we still have our other safeguards for that, like, for example, the ventilation part and also the constant wearing, consistent wearing of face masks by our school children. You said put ako sa boosters because, uh, as you know, the private sector has expressed concern about about 1.5 million doses. The Moderna yon and AstraZeneca that might go to waste by the end of the month. Uh, gusto nilang gamitin na nila for the employees or for for the government to use for an expanded booster program. Ano na ba mga decision don? Uh, wala pa po sa ngayon ano. So katulad po ng sabi natin. It's really very tedious, no? especially for FDA, because there is really that sparse evidence for vaccinating second boosters among the general population. If you try to scar through the different studies that are being issued right now, you'd find that there is this minimal benefit that will be given to the general population if you have your second booster. So I just like to explain to everybody that the government through the Department of Health issues guidelines based on science and evidence. If there are not enough evidence at hand for us to recommend this to the population, we cannot do that. So we need further evaluation of this. And uh, what we can advise, uh, because uh, we have already this policy and it has been practiced already by some of the private companies whereby Government has offered that we will be helping the private companies who still have these vaccines to donate it to the local governments or to some organizations or some workplaces where these vaccines may be able to may be used immediately. Ang hinihingi nila to expand lang naman to ages 50 to 59. Well, Yung ano approve Yes, ma'am. We are all for that. Actually, we have uh, recommended already and uh, uh, requested actually from the FDA if we can expand the sectors uh, that will be given the second boosters, 50 to 59 years old, and also those with comorbidities in the population. But we need to wait for the amended EUA coming from the FDA before we can be able to implement that, and as well as the HTAC review after that. So we need enough evidence for FDA and the HTAC to thoroughly review this. Um, but at the same time, kasi, uh, you know why you uh, expedite? Uh, does that really take that long? Because uh, that recommendation has been made, made a while back, no? Uh, so what's what's holding that up? Yeah, so yeah, we have to understand the process. We just don't have one vaccine uh, for the FDA to review. It's going to be a uh, various vaccines that are currently being used in the country to find out if there are enough evidence for each of these vaccines to be given as second boosters for the general population. So that is the dilemma right now. Because as I've said repeatedly, there is sparse evidence for these second boosters for the general population. Mm. Ma'am, but at the same time, kasi we're, we're looking at an expiration by the end of July. Uh, that's 10 days away. Yes. Um, I'm wondering, lang, kasi you, you also talked about the possibility of donating uh, these private vaccines to the LGUs. But even then, you're looking at a 10-day window. Eh. At the same time, there was earlier talk uh, with, by DOH officials of the possibility of uh, redefining the expiration dates uh, of these vaccines. So I, I'm wondering where we are there. Is that still a possibility to head off the expiration? Or uh, is that off, uh, off the books already? That's still part of that. No? So we have already communicated uh, to our manufacturers the extension of shelf lives of these specific vaccines which are about to expire. We're just waiting for the response coming from the manufacturers. So if and when it comes out, and it's already maybe July 30, and the uh, study, the stability study of this manufacturer shows that it can still be extended, and then we can extend it. Uh, but for now, uh, we have to wait for that decision. Hmm. Ma'am, balikan ko lang po Ma yung mga... Ma'am, 
Oh, sorry. Balikan no, ko lang po yung mga mag-face-to-face -face mm -hmm. classes because uh, something just popped into my head when you said that, you know, we have other contingencies, uh, standard protocols, among other things, consistent face masking, as you said. Uh, will, will that be, uh, will, will there be subsidy for, for and help for students to sustain their supply of masks? Because sa totoo lang, this is additional cost for a lot of uh, people. Yes, uh, children are used to, to masks also, but not necessarily, I mean, they in particular have not necessarily been going out every day, spending <coughs> half a day to a whole day uh, outside, and then may risks then, as we know, kung maluluma yung masks nyo. So this is additional cost for our parents and their families. Um, will that get any kind of assistance uh, and supplies at the schools? Well, if there would be a need, uh, the Department of Health is willing to provide. But uh, the communities are being provided also by their local government units with this mask ever since the pandemic started. So we, this is just a matter of discussion. Uh, it is not a matter that uh, can be something that can delay the full implementation of these face-to-face -face classes because government can provide. Mama, iba lang po ako yung dengue. Uh, Kayo po ba, ano po ba ang inyong paninindigan as to whether the dengue vaccine, the dengue vaccine, should be reconsidered in view of the rising number of dengue cases? Yeah, well, as well, uh, as well as with the other technologies that are being used by the public, we need to go through this by studying it further. Kailangan may thorough study tayo para mapag-aralan kung maari nating gamitin sa ating populasyon o hindi. Pinag-aaralan natin, hindi lamang po yan. Meron na rin pong mga ibang bakuna kasi na lumabas, although not yet at that stage of clinical trial na pwede na. So we are now scarring the different experiences of other countries which are already implementing this vaccine. I think it's about 23 countries already. We are generating evidence, and once our evidence are complete already, we are going to convene our experts. Mm, but, ma'am, maybe you could give us uh, again a, a brief uh, uh, background on how different the the administering and the regimen for mm -hmm. dengvaxia is. Because my screening process, paputo, di ba? I mean, it's not necessarily for everyone. It's for for people specifically who've already gotten uh, 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 dengue uh, in the past. How much more complicated does that make vaccination for uh, dengue? Well, our studies have not been completed yet. No, the evaluation have not been completed because. Uh, there is this thing that uh, is being said that we need to have this test first before we provide it to children uh, uh, for this specific vaccine because there is this uh, thing called antibody enhancement that happens when you are given this vaccine. Meaning if you have had the dengue before and then uh, the, this is be given to you because there are a lot of strains of dengue. And then uh, there is this adverse reaction. But uh, again, let's go back. We are going to thoroughly study this and we will be providing information to the public once our recommendations from our experts are out. You check yung local government ng La Carlota in Negros Occidental. They ban the entry of people to City Hall na walang boosters. You think this is a good idea and you think it should be encouraged kahit, hindi, kahit walang vaccine mandate? Well, the local government has that authority naman over their constituents. That's one. Uh, the second, uh, we still are not mandating no, that this, yes. this is part of our fully vaccinated. But if uh, the local government uh, would uh, implement this uh, and uh, it was uh, consulted with their stakeholders and their constituents and it's acceptable, then they can just do that. No, But uh, as I've said, uh, we need to also be cautious because it's not part of the national guidelines yet. Meron kayong proposal, di ba, yung no booster, no entry, which you are still studying. What's the status of that proposal? Well, uh, we need to consult uh, the sectors because uh, there are implications to other sectors when we do this uh, because there would be uh, this limitation for, uh, for other people who are not boosted to go into these spaces like, for example, restaurants, if we implement that. That's why we need to, uh, to continuously consult the sectors and also the advice and the approval of the Office of the President will be needed. This will be tackled in our IATF meeting, uh, which is soon to convene. Well, well speaking of the IATF, is it reorganized? Now? That's according to Malacanang. Can you, do you have any idea anong klaseng reorganization yan? 
Uh, yes, we had a meeting with the president, and uh, we have discussed this with him. And uh, as the office of the president have advised that we should reconstitute the membership of the IATF. Uh, in the original EO-168, which has created IATF, there were only seven agencies that were included. It has been expanded to up to 34 agencies during the previous administration because of the need to do mm. that. Because we were really uh, having these uh, different responses for COVID-19. But right now that we are seeing that uh, you know, uh, our COVID situation is more manageable and the president's directive is to streamline our processes, he has recommended that we reconstitute and revert it back to the original seven agencies. And that the implementing arm before, which is the National Task Force, be reintegrated or uh, be harmonized, and we will just use the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, which is already part of our processes in government, so as to for us to further streamline the processes. Ma'am, alongside the reconstitution of the task force and the streamlining of the processes, what are the um, impl implications or recommendations uh, when it comes to the alert level system? Uh, we also have discussed this with the president, and according to him, uh, when we have discussed this, that the, I, the alert level system that we have right now has been created before according to the situation. And now that the situation has already evolved, we need to move forward. So he has recommended that we dissociate uh, the alert levels from the restrictions that it is linked to. Meaning, uh, when uh, eventually, uh, when we get to that point, that we are going to revise uh, this alert level system. We're just going to retain the alert levels uh, so that we can have this risk communication tool for the public, that the public will still know that if it's alert level one, it's low risk, alert level four, it's high risk. But we dissociate it from the restrictions, meaning the restrictions for the three C's areas, the close crowded and close contact, will not be part of that anymore. We will have generalized restrictions, like for example, wearing of masks, you should be vaccinated, you should be boosted, and the others. So you're talking about this in the future tense, no? Uh, how soon will that be implemented, that kind of alert level system? Yeah, well, uh, of course, we are going to study the situation. Uh, but we were given uh, a specific timeline by the president that if we can be able to implement it as soon as when the cases are, we are looking at the cases and it's already as to seem to be manageable already. Uh, that's the time that we can already shift uh, this alert level system uh, into this recommendation by the president. So I think it's going to be soon, uh, but uh, we need to uh, ascertain if we can be able to do that based on the situation. Okay, under Secretary Maria, Sario, Maria Rosario Vergere, ma'am, maraming maraming salamat po. You think Vergere, you, of course, as Thank you know, you, is OIC of the Department of Health. Thank you, ma'am. And our final guest uh, for the evening, fresh from the FIBA Asia Cup, Gilas, Pilipinas coach, Chot Reyes. Coach Chot, welcome to the Chiefs. Good evening. Uh, good evening, good coach. Evening. Hi, Ami. Good evening, Robbie. Hi, Hi uh, the Chief. Thanks for having me. Uh, coach, diretsoin ko na kayo, ha? Uh, katulad ng yep. kanina. I don't know if fresh is the word you would use uh, for yourself. I'm sure you've been seeing yung, yung ating mga panatikong mga fans ng basketball sa Pilipinas, people calling for your head, people calling on you to resign. Sir, diretsoin ko na lang. Will you resign? And ano po ang mensahe nyo sa ating basketball-loving nation? Well, first of all, uh, I am uh, thankfully logged off uh, social media, so I'm not really seeing all of these things that you have mentioned. But of course, the people around me are, and, and I am aware, I'm aware of, of what's going on and what's being said. And like I said, when I took this job, uh, I came in with my eyes wide open. Uh, this is just my fourth month uh, in this job. So, ang uh, bensay ko sa ating mga kababae is to be patient. Uh, I took over a program that had very little left. Uh, there were hardly any players. Uh, left uh, when I took over on February 1, just last February 1. So uh, we have put together a plan to put the best team forward for August uh, 2023. And uh, I know it's difficult, but we're just uh, asking for patience. 
uh, for our uh, fellow our countrymen uh, because like I said we're trying to fly this plane while we're repairing it mm. so uh, uh, that's why we're seeing all of these problems uh, we wish we uh, could perform better in international uh, in the competitions that we're joining unfortunately the, the the conditions are not as ideal as we'd want to. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go into the details because I, I don't want to make excuses. Mm. But uh, just to ask for more understanding and more patience, because like I said, uh, uh, this is uh, just uh, the fourth month uh, mm. of my assumption into office. Mm. And, and coach, we don't want to corner you into details, certainly not to corner you into, into promises, but between now in August 2023, the problems that I think you've, you've, you've alluded to are still the same problems, Dibab. Your access to the best players, schedules, um, and, and so on, playing time for everybody uh, to, uh, to get together. How do you solve, how do you address all of those problems between now and August 2023? Yes, things are already being done right now to address those issues. And that's why we're having problems right now where we don't have we have a, we don't have access to the best players. We don't have enough time because the best example for it is the PBA. They are already uh, uh, expediting their schedule and fast tracking it so that by May, mid May and June next year, they can give us three months preparation and access to all the players uh, and all the time that we need. Three months are actually. Uh, so now, at this point, main uh, palang, those issues that we are experiencing now are already being addressed, precisely to obviate that uh, circumstance from happening again. That's why, like I said, there are already plans that we have put forward. Kaya uh, lang, they have been set in motion. Uh, unfortunately, we won't see the results yet because uh, it's it's just been set in motion, and that's why. Uh, we are uh, right now at the struggling phase, but uh, things will get better. We will get better. The team will play better. Uh, and like I said, we just uh, seek the understanding and, and the patience uh, of our country. Coach, kung sarang, struggling uh... yan eh, kung, kung struggling yan eh, are you seeing a good chance sa team for the Asia, for the August qualifiers? Are you seeing a good chance na ano, okay na yung performance? Uh, the August qualifiers, well, there will be, uh, we will have uh, access to more players because the PBA by then will be uh, entering the final space already. So there will be more players made available. Uh, unfortunately, the, the issue on the lack of time and practice time is, going, is still going to be there. But uh, at least we will see more players who are going to become available. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from the players who are here now, lahat yung mga nag at nag to to represent the country now. But precisely to, to feel the best team possible, we have to take a look at, at a lot of other players, kung sino talaga yung pepwede. So hopefully we will perform better in the August window. Uh, but definitely, uh, as as uh, as the months go go on, uh, we should keep getting better. Uh, again, a, a, a point of a point of concern: there will be a window in November. There will be two games in the November qualifiers where both the PBA and the UAP and NCAA are playing. So you can imagine again the problem that we will have in the lack of players. So. Uh, these are the kind of, of conditions that we are facing, and we just have to make do, really, with what we have. Uh, we're trying our best. Um, unfortunately, these are the cards we are dealt with, so we have to make do with what we have. At least we already know that looking forward for the big competition, the, the World Cup, the World Cup in 2023, we will have uh, minimum three months preparation with all the players at our disposal. So, yun ang pinaghahandaan natin. It must be very hard for you that I'm sure of, but what about the players, coach? How are they feeling about this uh, string of losses? And not just ordinary losses, no, but heavy losses. And then there's the 
Filipinas win no, in football. And do they do they feel any pressure from the well unavoidable comparisons that are now being drawn from this? Well, like uh, Kiefer uh, said to uh, Robbie earlier, uh, ang feeling naman ng mga players, a lot of people are looking for the players who are not here instead of uh, talking and, and focusing on the players who are here. I mean, sila yung nag-hirap ng sacrifice, sacrifice. They put themselves on the line. We have, we have uh, freshman college players playing, going up against NBA players in this competition. You can imagine how difficult it is. But still, they put on the, the, the jersey, the uniform, and they continue fighting. Uh, unfortunately, the, the results are not as, as we uh, want it, but uh, uh, certainly they're, they're feeling that uh, as well. But we just keep telling them to keep their eyes uh, on, the, on the big picture and to... The, the lessons that they learned here, they're very invaluable. Dahil nothing beats, uh, for example, our players going up against a couple of NBA players, uh, our young guys going up against naturalized players, Americans from other countries and other veterans. Uh, that's, big, that's going to make them better players. So I think uh, through all the pressure and the hardships, I think the, our players appreciate that. Naman. And, uh, and they know... Uh, as we said, is that you know we just hopefully there will be there is a purpose to all this pain, Ikama. Sir, you mentioned several times the problem of a lack of players. Uh, I'm sorry, a stupid question coming from somebody not very familiar with sports. Uh, uh, what's the root of this problem? Is it a, a problem of resources, a problem of piracy by uh, by uh, by other countries, for example? Uh, what is it? What is it all boiled down to? Uh, more than anything, uh, it, it's, it's schedules. It's the schedules that we have uh, because the PBA is ongoing. We, got, we not only have the PBA, we have the UAP, we have the NCAA, we have college leagues ongoing as well. So uh, and that's that's the problem. Uh, that's the biggest problem. Really. And, and we all know the best players are, are in the PBA. So when the, the league is ongoing, uh, we cannot get the, those players. Now, the PBA can take breaks to accommodate, for example, this uh, tournament. However, they, we have decided not for the PBA not to take any break to expedite and finish their season already so that uh, in 2023, they can already give the team, like I said, three months, all the time that we need to prepare. Mm -hmm. So, sinasabi namin, pakusin na yung schedule niyo ngayon. Um, hindi namin magagamit yung mga players now, pero at least matapos na maanda yung season para sa 2023, we will get access to all the players. That sabi, sabi ni Kinito in an interview, no, na it's uh, because of the lack of a big man. That's one of the reasons, no. But uh, I have to ask this again, Coach Chot, no. I wonder if uh, this problem of a lack of a big man is not something that's perennial to us Filipinos. And some people have observed nga na parang we keep insisting on fighting in a game that's essentially a game of height, no. Um, may, may laban ba talaga tayo? May laban ba tayo? I know, may push mo tayo. <laughs> may laban ba meron talaga? So, considering that we well, a big man. Oh. Well, for in Asia, for sure, meron tayong laban. Even with the, not, notwithstanding the lack of a big man. And that's the, that's the entire objective. We want to be the highest placed Asian team in the World Cup in 2023. Because the highest placed Asian team qualifies for the Olympics in 2024. That's the goal. That's the dream. That's worth what we are all aspiring for. So, uh, hindi naman natin kailangan palunin sa World Cup yung USA or, 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 uh, or Spain or these powerhouses like France. We just need to uh, play uh, at, a, at, a, at a level in the World Cup that we can compete against those powerhouses, get perhaps a, a, a win or two, and in the process, end up as the best placed Asian team. Because mm -hmm. if that happens, then we get a ticket to the Olympics in 2024. And we haven't been there for like, what, 50 years? We haven't been there for 50 years. 
that, that's the goal, that's the dream. That's why we're doing all of these things. May we're not man, man shooting China. from the moon. Diba? <laughs> Ang China, marami What's din mga gig, man. Hmm. Marami yeah. din sila. Well, Saka yung New Zealand, diba, Coach Chot? <laughs> oh. Ay, yeah. mga big men din yung, yung mga yung, yung, yung New Zealand at Australia naman, they will not be counted in the Asian uh, oh. consideration for the Olympics. They they have their own FIBA Oceania zone. So, Although now in the Asia Cup, it's, it's kind of weird in the FIBA Asia Cup, kasali sila sa competition. Yeah. Kaya nga, but in the consideration for the Olympics, hindi naman sila kasama. Mm -hmm. So that gives us that gives us a, a, a track, that gives us a okay. chance. So uh, the, the best mm -hmm. way to explain it is in the last World Championships in 2014, we just finished uh, slightly behind Tirana. Sana tayo yung naging uh, best place mm. Asian team noon in the 2014 uh, World Cup. Eh. So, you know, we were very close already then. So, so kaya, kaya ta. We just need to get the best uh, preparation and the best players, best team possible. Okay. So, we're aiming for Olympics, huh? Mm. Yes, that's the goal. Mm. That's okay. dream. Coach. Coach, one last one last question, and again, not to take um, any credit away, and in fact, giving credit to all the young men uh, with you right now who really sacrificed for our country. But if everything comes together as you wish, and all the pub, all the basketball leagues cooperate, we get our act together. You have access to to our pool as as you wish. How different will our team in August 2023 look like relative to what they look like right now? It will look pretty different, but there will certainly be uh, uh, several players on this team that will still be there. I mean, we're going to put a pool together, and certainly all the players in this team are going to be part of the pool. Because when we put the final group together, we're, it's not going to be among 12 right away. It's going to be maybe 16 or 18 players. Then they're going to train. They're going. We're going to go on... Uh, tune-up matches uh, and, and uh, trainings abroad and basketball camps in Europe uh, to practice and prepare. And then whoever is uh, playing at their best uh, by the time uh, August comes around, uh, those are the ones who will make the final 12. So uh, I expect that we will, will, uh, will, will look pretty different sa height na lang. I think there will be a big difference already. Mm -hmm. Okay, Coach Chot Reyes. Sir, maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you sir. Coach. Salamat, salamat, salamat. And that's it for the Chiefs. We hope what was discussed here will keep the conversation going. Mask on, wash hands, stay safe, Philippines. I'm Robbie Alampay. Hi, Mami Pamintuan of the Philippine Star. I'm Luchi Cruz Valdez, News 5. I'm Ed Lingao, and we are One News, all sides, all the time.